Uh, excited about where our team's headed. Um, really excited about this group. We've uh, had three practices, two shorts, and then one uh, full pad practice on Saturday. And we'll get to be in uh, pads today and keep things rolling. Um, a lot of competition out there. Um, as a whole, the overall feel is probably a little younger than, than what I remember in the past. Uh, maybe it's the total number of new players in terms of mid-years. I think we're up a little bit in mid-years. We've broken a record every year with more and more mid-years. And then the addition of the portal guys. So it's just a, a lot of new faces out there. And uh, that's the biggest difference. But uh, they're progressing well and practicing well. And we'll have our first scrimmage uh, Saturday. Um, and looking forward to that. We've got a huge coaches clinic going on um, this weekend. I think we've got over seven or 800 high school coaches that still enjoy coming to our clinic and get to enjoy that. That's a big piece of it. A lot of spring sports, um, the exciting moments going on. I know um, our women's uh, swimming programs getting ready to have NCAAs, a lot of tennis going on, baseball, softball is doing incredible. So a lot of uh, spring sports right now competing that uh, we all can support as Bulldogs. With that, I'll open it up. Coach, I think I saw Jamie Chedwell is going to come in, and is, is I know every year you look at different teams and what they do, or, or are you guys looking at some Liberty stuff, and what is your relationship uh, with Coach Chedwell? I know Coach Chedwell really well. I think he's a great guy, great coach. We were lucky to be able to get him in here, um, excited to get him in here. I think more than us studying them, there's a lot of high school coaches that uh, – try to implement um, philosophies he has on offense. There's a little bit of a, a option carryover, a new age um, offense in terms of the ability of the quarterback to run the ball, run option from the gun. Uh, they do a really good job of that. He's done that since Coastal and Liberty. So uh, we try to gear our clinic towards benefiting high school programs uh, in our footprint and not just our state, but in a five hour radius. And, and he certainly does that, as well as uh, Coach Fritz, who I have a lot of respect for. Um, he's going to be at our, our, our clinic and be one of the, the keynote speakers who did an incredible job at Georgia Southern, incredible job at Tulane, and, and now will do an incredible job at Houston. He's just a really good football coach. Yeah, Coach, I think when we spoke to you during National Signing Day, you talked about how large your offensive line class was, and you mentioned how most of them have to lose weight or will have to lose weight. I'm curious if you could provide an update on it, if anybody's gotten down to that. I think it was the 330 mark you mentioned. Nobody had played over that for you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've recognized a large group of that group. That group as a whole has been tremendous at weight loss. I don't know if any of them are, maybe a couple are right at 330, but uh, Nair's had the greatest uh, loss going from 396 to I'm not, I don't want to quote, so I don't know. I mean, he's lost 40 to 50 pounds somewhere in that window. Daniel Calhoun's lost a tremendous amount. Um, Easley's lost a tremendous amount. Uni has done a really good job there, too. And Tolliver has probably had the least to lose, so he hasn't had to lose a lot. He is having to play center, um, new position that he's developing at. But that, that group across the board is unique to have, most of the time mid-years you have two or three O-linemen. Having five is very unique. So, you know, you, you don't really want all five of them there at once because you get a recipe for disaster. <laughs> but you got five players who are getting better a lot faster and we've tried to integrate them into different parts of the practice, not all at once because uh, it's hard. It's, it's the largest jump there is in all of sports to me to go from a high school offensive lineman to a college offensive lineman. Yeah, we're going to choose to talk to Jalen Walker today. When you were recruiting him, how were you able to sort of build the trust level of you guys who were going to be able to develop him as an inside linebacker and making that move from a guy who played a lot of edge in high school to ultimately develop, being, developing him in it as that inside linebacker for you guys? Yeah, well, he played both. Um, he played a little bit of what we call Sam Star, played out in space, and he did rush off the edge. He's still a really good edge rusher. Um, he knows that that was part of the development plan because – he had seen Quay do it. He had seen other football players in our program uh, develop as an off-the-ball backer and an end-of-the-line backer. And he, he does uh, both those things really well. Um, he missed last spring to develop at inside backer. He's using this spring to springboard himself into uh, a better all-around football player. But it, it was not a hard sell because he's got wonderful parents, wonderful sibling. I mean, he's, his, his dad is a, a college football coach, has been for a long time, and knows football. It's, uh, it's, it's great. And, and um, soothing to have a conversation with somebody that, that understands the development process and, 
nobody better than his dad and his mom to help him realize how far he had to go. But he has been on a journey, and he's he's much more than a football player. You know, he's one of our best leaders on and off the field uh, in a lot of organizations on campus. Uh, he represents the student athlete the right way. You mentioned the inside linebackers, kind of unique this spring without having smile. Just what are your early impressions of this group that on the whole is fairly young? Young. I mean, that's the first impression is a lot of youth there, uh, a lot of reps. Um, if you, you know, the, the Braylon and CJ are way ahead in terms of play time that a second spring player, because this is their second spring, would normally be. Um, in a perfect world, we'd like these guys to be coming into playing time. Um, that's not the case. They got thrust into it and had to uh, learn kind of trial by fire. So the, the guys behind them are even younger than them. Uh, there's not, you know, between Smile and the next guy, there's this, this big gap there. And um, I think part of that gap was created because the two young guys, you know, played well and were good last year. And if you're sitting behind that, sometimes you start questioning what you should do. And the guy that's had a good spring so far has been uh, Bowles. He's done a good job and uh, he's picking things up. He didn't get the benefit from his high school not letting him go mid-year. He didn't get the benefit of coming in with those guys, but he's just as good an athlete as those guys. And he's going to help us special teams-wise. He's learning the defense. And then the uh, other three guys that are here mid-year provide good depth and, and they're learning. Coach, I'm curious of uh, what you've seen so far from Trevor Etienne and just wondering how much of a transition is it for him from a uh, 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 playbook standpoint? Yeah, I, don't, I think running back is one of the positions that you can pick up really quick. You know, uh, there's some similarities between our offense and theirs, a lot of the same runs. A lot of the same words in some cases, so he's uh, he's not uh, struggled to transition that part. I think uh, getting comfortable in the offense. Um, there's nuances. I've met with him about it. Differences in the way we do things and they did things offensively that he's picking up on. He's very bright. Not going to be a, a problem for for him. There's been some you know mistakes and things, but uh, nothing that that can't be corrected uh, in terms of his effort and practice habits. We've encouraged him to to to, to give. Uh, Great effort, run the ball past the last defender, and he's uh, he's a sponge. He's he's absorbed that. He's he's enjoyed getting pushed. He's enjoying the competition of that room because there's guys he's competing with within that room. So I'm very pleased with where he is, and hope that he'll continue the trajectory he's on. Yeah, Kurt, when we talked to Brock Bowers in the past, he talked about wanting to set the example for the tight end room in terms of his work ethic, things like that. How have you seen Oscar Dell? Try to take up that mantle as the, the elder statesman and that tight end. In there. Uh, Oscar's really physical. You know, he does things his way. He's, he's not Brock. He doesn't try to be Brock. He's a, a, a quiet leader, similar to Brock, but he's really physical. He's tough. Um, he knows the work ethic it requires. I mean, the guy's taken a, a lot of reps since being here. He's uh, he's been durable and um, he's doing a good job uh, leading in that room as well as uh, Lucky is and, and the two young kids. Even on the transfers team, um, ask about the three-year wide receiver and kind of what you've seen from each of those guys so far. Well, they've uh, been a little banged up. Uh, Colby's been a little banged up. He's had an ankle happened, I think, right before we started or right before we went on break. And so he's been able to practice some and do some things. Um, he's actually gotten better with each practice. Probably did the least any of his practices, the first practice, a little more the third practice. And then hoping today he's able to do some more. So uh, he's very bright, transitioned smoothly. Uh, Michael Jackson's shown up, made some plays, and so has London. You know, L London is really in his second year of college football. So I think a lot of times you take a guy in the portal, you would think of immediate rah rah Dom. Those guys had played in our <coughs> conference a lot. Uh, London had played in our conference, but probably a young player that's uh, developing. The other two guys are a little bit older, uh, but very pleased with all three of those guys. You know, we, we don't. I don't sit here and put expectations on top of people of, uh, of, of having super high expectations. I, I want them to fit into our culture and, and, and buy into special teams and, and practice hard and learn how to practice in the spring and then come back fall. They should be conditioned and smarter and be able to benefit us more. And uh, each one of us done that. Everyone asked about the tight ends, I guess, Oscar and company. Uh, what are your impressions of them as a whole? And what did you guys see from the transfer that's going to come in this summer that you wanted to add to that position? Well, experience. 
um, size and speed with the, you know, with, with knowing uh, Pierce's unfortunate situation, we were, we were going to be short there and we felt like we're getting a really talented, uh, intelligent, experienced, mature body type and um, we need that at that position. Um, Lawson's having a good spring so far and uh, Oscar's a, a proven player with toughness. Uh, we got to bring the two young kids along really fast. Jaden uh, Riddell's been dealing with a little bit of a hamstring, so yeah, we're trying to get him back out there best he can. But uh, he, they, they need all the reps they can get. They just need to go out there and take a ton of reps and keep getting better so that they can grow. But, you know, we're not where we need to be from a health standpoint in that room. And, um, it would help to have uh, been here, but he's not, and he'll, he'll, he'll be here in the summer. Hey, Kirby, uh, last week Mikhail talked about both the team and him individually having a get better mindset. I know last week you said the team is still finding their identity, but you know, for all three units, have they gotten better? And what exactly does that, you know, get better mindset mean for each of those units, uh, offense, defense, special teams? Just being detailed in what we're attacking each day. Don't go out there without a purpose. I try to have the coaches each day go in and give you know, a few points of emphasis because we're not careful right now. There's so many things to correct that you can't see the forest for the trees. And it can be overwhelming to a young player. So we, we try to uh, narrow their focus on small things. And, you know, we got 15 opportunities to get better. And uh, so far we've done that in the, the first three. And uh, I have full expectation that they'll uh, come out there today with the intentions of, of growing and getting better. Yeah, Coach, when we talked to Carson last week and asked him about areas of growth, he mentioned playing with more confidence. I'm curious what that looks like, what development looks like in, in, in the area of confidence, and if you've seen any you know, steps in growth. Yeah, I think one of the big challenges for him is being comfortable and trusting the receivers around him. You know, he's had the the, 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 the fortune and misfortune of, of, of Brock and Ladd and Marcus Roseme being in the lineup, but yet he's also had the misfortune of him not being in the lineup. And uh, as a quarterback, you know, you ask any good quarterback, they like wide receivers they trust, they know, they have an intuitive um, ability to think the same way. And there's a lot of change in that room right now. So uh, showing confidence in himself and showing confidence in those players to do their job and trust them uh, is a big part of it. That, that trust is not given, it's earned. And they're earning his trust and it's, it goes both ways. Kirby, I saw you talk to Megan last night about Nick's comments in NIL and just kind of the state of things. But there was so much talk in the offseason about the college coaches being wanting to move on because of everything going on. And it, what are, did you have any thoughts on that? And do you have some confidence that the leaders of, in college athletics are going to come up with solutions that will make it so that college coaches will like you want to stay? Yeah, I, I think the leaders are going to do a great job positioning us for the future in terms of what they do. The choice of each college coach is obviously up to the college coaches. I mean, um, there's certainly uh, higher stakes and higher pay than there's ever been uh, for college coaches across the board. I mean, there's, there's, there's you know, the guys making money and making livings that, you know, coordinators can retire now. They don't have to go get a head job. You look back even 10 years ago, how much has changed um, for coaches. So there's no, uh, there's no, crying out there from, from, from my end. I, I, will, I want what's best for the student athlete. And sometimes I question the system we have now, if it's best for the student athlete, because it's not, it, it's not necessarily best for the sophomore, junior, and senior. It may be best for the freshman, but it may not be best for the sophomore, junior, and senior. I would, see, I would love to see a little more fair system for the players in terms of within the players. Uh, but there's not a lot of, I don't have a lot of coaches complaining, saying they want to get out of the profession. They enjoy the profession. They want the profession to be about relationships, developing talent, and rewarding positive performance both on and off the field. And that comes through what you've done in your body of work of being there, not necessarily uh, where it's a reverse system of the younger players sometimes get more than the older players. Kirby, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Little Muschamp's decision to become a defensive analyst? And uh, why you hired uh, Coach Robinson? Yeah, uh, Will Will came and talked to me, and it's really important that he continue to be a, a major factor in his son's life. He, he spent a lot of time around uh, young men in this profession, and he's developed a lot of really good football players, and he's shaped a lot of 
boys in the mint, and he's got a lot of great relationships from the places he's coached. He's got players from Florida, Auburn, South Carolina that reach out to him all the time that he's good friends with, and he spent a lot of time developing those kids, and he wants to be able to see his, his son. He wants to be able to watch his son develop and play. He got to see that firsthand with Jackson here, who did a tremendous job for us. And just a, every day, Coach Mustang got to go on the practice field and, and be with his son. I can only imagine what that, that felt like for him and the, sat, the satisfaction of seeing his son each day. Now he's got Witt, who's got an opportunity to go to, to Vanderbilt and play. So he wants to be a factor in, in, in his life and be with him. So that was a really easy transition. I thought he handled it very well. He's very uh, communicated very well with me. And then um, our ability to hire uh, T Rob was tremendous. He got tons of value in our SEC footprint, uh, recruiting value, football knowledge, um, leader of men. I think anywhere he's coached, his players really, really trust him and enjoy him. And he's been nothing but an asset for us in terms of knowledge, but also in terms of relationships. So we'll, we'll get a great benefit from T Rob coming, and we'll get a huge benefit from Coach Muschamp remaining part of our program to help us. Kirby, uh, two part on your defensive uh, transfers, Jake and Xavier. Can you catch us up on them? And then also, uh, drawn from the making speech last night, the the new uh, assume nothing. Why why you chose that as an off season mantra? I'll start with that. I didn't choose it myself. I had some help, and we we get outside support with that. So I'm not taking credit for that. I think uh, I have a close relationship with Nike and Phil Knight, and been on a trip with him for six or seven consecutive years, and have so much respect for. Uh, him and his wife and, and what he's done with his business that I thought was really cool when the opportunity came up to study their success. You know, you, you want to be successful, study successful people. And they have certainly been that. So that's really where that came from, from outside sources. Um, and then as far as uh, Jake and X, those guys are coming from you know, SEC programs. They've been in those programs. They, they are more mature than our mid-years. Um, they're intelligent. Uh, they're familiar with, with our systems. Uh, they're both uh, developing and, and we're working hard and, and competing for playing time. Got time for one more question. Kirby, Jared's obviously a guy that's been around the program for four years, but you know Cedric being the staple that he's been feels sort of new. What, how have you seen him step into that role in the middle of the offensive line? Yeah, I, I'm excited for the rest of the world to get to see Jared Wilson. This is a guy that, uh, number one, is I don't put a lot of high expectations on people and, and annoy people. He has a lot to do to be the best player he can be. But when you talk about athleticism at the center position, this guy runs faster than, than uh, a lot of our, our, our defensive backs, believe it or not, our tight ends, our quarterbacks. I mean, his, his numbers, extremely athletic, over 300 pounds, uh, can get to the second level as quick as anybody just really athletic. So he, he's had the great fortune of learning from said. Unfortunately, that's not a position that you rotated at a ton. So he didn't get a lot of opportunities to go and play like maybe a, a Mims or a Dylan Fairchild. They got to go in the game and play. He didn't get an opportunity to do a lot of those things, but he is a really, really good athlete and even better person. Um, he's got you know a younger brother that's uh, going to be a really talented football player as well. And we just enjoyed um, his leadership. And I'm looking forward to you know the center being the leader of the group, like said was. He's taking on a new role and kind of doing it his way. Thank you, coach.